uh, I think it's time to make another stupid video. Is ultra wide gaming worth it? I spent a bunch of time the other night looking for this answer on the internet and the answers are all over the place. Some people will say absolutely not, right? For a good 34 inch IPS G-Sync 100 hertz display, you're gonna be spending $1,200 and if you have $1,200 on your budget, why not buy three really good 1080p monitors, right? And then you can have the little the panoramic setup. Um, I heard plenty of people say, yes, once you go ultra wide, you never go back. We're about to find out, right? Um, currently, the monitor I've been gaming on for the last year or so has been the Asus PG279Q, which is their 1440p, 27-inch IPS, 165 hertz G-Sync display. And I can tell you, it is absolutely incredible. If you have the money, go out and buy one. But this Black Friday, the Alienware, uh, I think it's called the AW3418DW, was on sale for $800. So you could get this for $800 or that for $750. The price argument that used to exist a couple of years back, I don't know if that's really valid anymore, right? So I want to tackle that. The other thing that I want to find out is, since this is a 165 hertz display, and this is a maximum of 120 hertz, is there going to be a noticeable performance decrease in my games? Am I going to notice the drop in frames? Um, I'm also curious about the fact uh, of whether or not tabbing out of games so I can watch YouTube or something like that is going to be a problem. And uh, I just hope this kind of helps out. A lot, a lot of the videos when it's talking about multi-monitors versus ultra-wide, people always bring up productivity. I don't work from home. I go to an office to work. So when I'm home, I'm here to game. Occasionally I'll watch Netflix, but again, I have a den with a TV in it. That's where I'll watch TV. So, um, yeah, I hope I'm going to be able to answer some questions. I'm going to set it up and run some benchmarks and just kind of give you all my general thoughts of whether or not this was worth it, man, because it is a really big um, price commitment. So, uh, let's find out. Everybody go All right, so I've had this now for about five days, and um, here's what I can tell you. Is there a noticeable difference in 165 frames per second and 120? Absolutely. Is it a horrible difference, though, like dropping from 100 down to 60? No. Over 100 frames per second for me has always been acceptable. Now, be cautioned, because a monitor like this is going to require something like a GTX 1080 or above in order to hit that 100 frames. I ran a benchmark in Rainbow Six Siege and 3D Mark comparing my old 27 inch 165 hertz monitor to this one and the results kind of surprised me. It really wasn't as drastic of a drop as I thought it would be. Now as far as productivity goes, I really didn't notice that much of a difference. Um, I always used to alt tab out of games because I would run them at full screen. So I would alt tab out to get to the second monitor and pull up YouTube or whatever I needed if I needed to watch a guide or a YouTube video or something like that. So it hasn't really been that big of a lifestyle change in terms of tabbing out of games and continuing to work. I will say, however, that if you do any sort of video editing like I'm having to do right now, that being able to see your entire timeline on one screen is super nice and convenient. So I'm very happy with that. Um, a couple of other thoughts here. When I bought my Asus PG279Q, all right, I was down between that and the Acer Predator, I think it was called the X27, and, and essentially all the reviews on Newegg and Amazon mentioned the fact that you were basically playing the lottery with what kind of quality panel you would get. I believe Asus and Acer get their panels from the same manufacturer, and they were notorious for having bad backlight bleed and IPS glow, right? which is where your corners were, will have uh, just a glowing effect went to full black screen. It doesn't really bug me that much uh, on my old monitor, but I was very pleasantly surprised that this Alienware had absolutely zero quality control issues whatsoever. I don't know where to get their panels from, but hats off to them for making a outstanding panel. Um, another thing, if you're worried about the amount of frames, right, 120, right, because I've always gamed for the last two years at 144 or above. It takes a couple of hours to get used to, but after that, there is really no deterrent. If you play 
competitive first person shooters. This is not going to be the monitor for you, right? Um, the extra space you get on the sides provides no competitive advantage in my personal opinion. Maybe if you're playing like a third person shooter, it might because you can see a little bit more. But people who are playing Overwatch or CSGO competitively probably would never even really need to worry about something like this because this is for the cinematic experience. Playing games like Rocket League or World of Warships is where this monitor really shines. RPGs will blow your mind away. Um, something I was reading on forums too was there aren't many games that are supported by a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. That's utter horseshit, okay? Every modern game that I've played supports 21 by 9. Like, literally every game that I play on a day-to-day -day basis supports it, okay? Destiny 2, World of Warships, Rocket League, Rainbow Six Siege, even Overwatch supports it. However, Overwatch is the only title that I know of where in order to uh, compensate for what they consider to be an unfair competitive advantage, they cut off the top and bottom and kind of chop the vertical space, and I really would not recommend trying to play Overwatch in that mode. I play it with the black bars on the side. It doesn't bug me one bit. Um, so that's, you know, that's something you got to take into account. Overall, I'm super happy I decided to go to a single ultra-wide monitor. My desk has never looked this clean, period, okay? When you have two monitors going, I had a monitor stand. Um, the main monitor had the USB 3.0 pass-through. Like, the cable management, it looked shitty, but I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not a professional streamer here, but I feel like this is a pretty decent-looking setup for your, for your average guy, right? So... Um, that's going to pretty much do it for the video. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the section below, um, and I will definitely get to all of them. I appreciate you guys watching again. I'll catch you on the next one.